Uh, what's up guys and I'm finally back from the Middle East okay so this is a long awaited video that people have been asking me to do and that's how to create a personal SRS server for use on DCS world with your friends so quite simple however it's gonna basically require a little bit of port forwarding however I'm gonna put some links on how to do that into the description every website uh, every web page I go to sorry will be linked in the description just to make it nice and easy for yourselves so let's get started Okay then, so let's get this underway. First thing we need to do is go to the Eagle Dynamics website and we're going to go to the DCS Simple Radio Standalone Thread. I'll put links to everything that's relevant in the description. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and find the download here. That will take us to the latest update. So as you see, currently it's 1.5.9, which is support for the MiG-19. If we scroll down, we're going to get to the download link. We're going to download that. I'm just going to save it and download really, really quickly and I'll open the folder. As you can see, I've got more than one of them because conveniently I've only just updated my SRS to 1.5.9. So in reality, what we would have is just this folder. All we do is right click it, extract all, which I'm not going to do because I've already got it extracted underneath. So once we've extracted it, we're going to go into the uh, 1.5.9 folder and we're going to scroll down. So where, where you would uh, normally go through the install and it'll install it in your system, and then you'll have client radio and SRS server. Uh, so conveniently client radio is what we use to actually talk in the aircraft. We're not worried about that for the time being. We're going to go straight onto the server settings. So if we open this up, effectively what we've just done now is, is start the server. As you can see, we can stop the server, start the server, really, really simple. Client admin is obviously when you've got connected clients, you can remove them, kick them, ban them, whatever you like. But I'll show you that later. Um, and port 5002 okay so this is the main sort of difficult part of installing SRS to run as a server is that we need to forward ports 5002 and 5003 you can edit them in the config file however whatever port you decide to use for this it's 5002 you need to uh, basically forward the next port up as well so 5002 and 5003 so for an example if we used 5010 we then have to use 5011 as well forwarded um, however I'll put some happy helpful links to that into the uh, description just because forwarding port is relatively router specific okay, okay so carrying on through the uh, the options secure coalition radios if we have that on that means blue forces can only talk to blue red forces can only talk to red uh, spectator audio so the spectator can talk to or listen to everyone uh, auto export list I'm not actually too sure about this one however so I'll try and find out and get back to you leave it in the comments I think line of sight so making the radios more specific distance so it means that if we're a thousand miles away we're not going to hear the guy talking at Katasi if you know we're too far away we're out of line of sight radios so it's just making the realism so same with realistic behavior all that good stuff um Encryption, never really used encrypted radios as far as I'm aware on here, but however, check for beta updates and external AWACS, yep, great, so all relatively specific uh, options for realism and whatnot. Um, all we're really worried about, to be honest, is coalition radios, enable it for spectators, that's always good, uh, line of sight, distance, and your realism, all that good stuff, that's really what we're worried about here. Uh, so this is effectively our server running. The next problem we've got is obviously getting people onto that server. So the easiest way of doing that is using our friend Google to find our IP address or our public IP address, which is the IP address that people will use to connect to the, um, our SRS server. Best way of doing it, it sounds daft, however, go straight into Google and type, what's my IP? And then it's conveniently going to tell you your IP address. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to blur out my IP address. However, whatever it says your public IP address is, that's what we're going to use. Really, really simple. And that's the IP address we're going to give to people that are looking to connect to our SRS server. However, we need a different um, sort of a subnet IP address to connect ourselves. So if we're going to play with the on the same machine that the uh, SRS server is actually currently located on, we're going to need a different IP address. So the way we do that, really, really simple. We're going to open up our command prompt. And all we're going to do is type in IP config and then press enter. Then a load of separate numbers come up. And all we want is 
IPv4 address, which is effectively your um, the subnet sort of IP address we want to connect to. So this number here, I'm going to blur it out once again for the purpose of this video. However, the one that's highlighted, that's the video, that's the connection you're going to use to connect your own server. And I'll prove that right now by opening up a client radio. So as you can see now, I've got the server open. It's still, it says stop server, which means it's running. And all I'm going to do is I've conveniently prepped this. Once again, this number will be blurred. However, this is my server. So this is the, that subnet that I got off the command prompt. And all I'm going to do is press connect. And as you can see, one client connected. And then I can go client admin. I can ban myself, kick myself. And you'll see that for all uh, connected clients. So that, in a real sort of quick sense, is how we set up our SRS server and how we find our own uh, IP address to connect to as such for other members and how we connect to it ourselves. So a couple of little points. If we're going to start an SRS server, it doesn't actually have to be on the computer we're using. So if you've got a spare computer down in the basement somewhere, you can turn it on and you can run the SRS server off of that, which then gets rid of you having to go into the IP config and get, get your um, IPv4 address. So that's one thing you can do, but obviously I'm aware that not everyone's got a spare computer and God knows I don't. And generally speaking, all you want to do is just to open up an SRS server so you can play on your own uh, flight server with, with a couple of mates. Um, and that is really, to be perfectly honest about it, like I said, I'm going to put in the description a message about or a link to um, port forwarding. I'll also put all of the links that I've used, so the simple radio standalone uh, forum page and probably the actual download page itself as well so hopefully this helps a couple of people because I know a lot of I've had a couple of messages in the past about people wanting to know how to set up a server for um, SRS and a bit of a quick video and once again I apologize for not making any videos in a while I've been away on military deployment but uh, back to sort of regular videos and stuff now so hopefully that's helped you and all the best stay safe if you like the video please like and subscribe thank you very much and goodbye